You've probably heard about the U.S. government's secret surveillance programs. A couple of their names would fit right into the book 1984. What exactly do these programs do, and how do they affect you? You're on the internet, right? And you probably have a cell phone, too. Everyone started talking about this when UK newspaper The Guardian published a top-secret document from a then-anonymous source. It's an order from the Foreign Intelligence Surveillance Court authorizing the FBI to collect, quote, call detail records or telephony metadata from calls made inside the U.S. or between the U.S. and other countries via Verizon. Pause. Does this affect people who live in the U.S.? Check. Does this affect people who use phone providers other than Verizon? Yes, most likely, according to an anonymous source in the Wall Street Journal. And does this affect people who don't live in the U.S.? Yes, if they talk on the phone with people in the country. But what exactly are call detail records or telephony metadata? Here's how President Obama explained it. Nobody is listening to your telephone calls. What uh, the intelligence community is doing is looking at phone numbers, and durations of calls. They are not looking at people's names, and they're not looking at content. Good. Now on to our second program, PRISM. Not this, this. The Guardian and the Washington Post revealed the existence of this PowerPoint presentation. The internet panned the slides for their design as much as their content, so here's a graphic do-over. The presentation touts PRISM as a program used most by the National Security Agency when it comes to collecting raw information. Apparently, the NSA can gather data from a few internet and tech companies you might have heard of. What kind of data, exactly? Pretty much everything. So wait, the NSA has been tapping the servers of internet giants and LOLing with you at all your important conversations in real time? Obama said PRISM doesn't target Americans or people who live in the U.S., but reports say that sometimes the NSA might accidentally collect U.S. data. Facebook CEO Mark Zuckerberg wrote that, quote, Facebook is not and has never been a part of any program to give the U.S. or any other government direct access to our server. And Google wrote something similar in a blog post. Both companies added that they only respond to requests for specific information and only comply when they have to by law. Now for program number three. Boundless Informant is basically a tool the NSA can use to mine all the phone and internet data it's already collected. Are these programs legal? Obama says they are and that they've been vetted by Congress, but the ACLU is suing the Obama administration over the phone surveillance. The ACLU wrote that phone data revealing, quote, who people talk to, for how long, how often, and possibly from where, allows the government to paint an alarmingly detailed picture of Americans' private lives. Opinions since the leaks went public range from this to this. A majority of Americans surveyed in a Pew Research Center poll said the NSA getting secret court orders to track the calls of millions of Americans to investigate terrorism is, quote, acceptable. People are also divided about the guy who leaked all this information. U.S. Speaker of the House John Boehner called Snowden a traitor, while WikiLeaks founder Julian Assange and famed Pentagon Papers leaker Daniel Ellsberg have called him the opposite. Now it's up to you to decide. Where do you fall on the chart? So with targeted surveillance, people, governments are required to identify people where there's evidence to believe that they're actually engaged in some sort of threatening behavior.